Ya, 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 ya. Yes, we are live now. Over to you, Sam. Yes. Yeah. Jai Bhim, a warm welcome to viewers of Ambedkar Karma Media. Today, we have the second conversation on race and caste in the series of five conversations. Today, the conversation is about race and caste being the part of the same problem. Both race and caste, discrim discrimination is not based on the biology, but it's constructed by the social biases maintained by the people who benefit from these systematic dis discrimination. The problem of both caste and race is the problem of bias. Satis uh, stratis stratification, power, and privileges. I welcome Sir Paul Guthir from USA and Sir Mangesh Dahiwale from India to the second conversation on race and caste. I also introduced Brother Rock in this conversation uh, as a civil rights activist and student of WED fraud and and he is also a meditation teacher in Buddhism. Over to you, Mangesh. Thank you, Sangadina, for this very uh, brief and uh, nice introduction. Uh, very privileged, privileged to have you uh, as our uh, introductor today. And uh, we had the first conversation last week on the same time, same day. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, request Brother Paul and Brother Rock to have any reflections, anything that they would like to say on the uh, last conversation. Because I think there was so much in such a little time, so many ideas, right, from Indus Valley civilization all the way up to the racial and the caste problem. So uh, over to you, Brother Paul and Brother Rock, to really reflect on any ideas that, you, 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 that, that struck your mind and you'd like to share that with the larger audiences. I think uh, last week we, we talked about uh, Varna and the way that Varna uh, controls the system of uh, discrimination in certain parts of the world, India in particular. And you had mentioned something, um, Mangesh, that I think went back, went by so quickly that I didn't catch it. And I'm sure that some of the people here did not catch it. And that was that there is a connection. You had mentioned research that there is a connection between the Indus Valley civilization and the Dravidians. We know who the Dravidians are over here, except you said it so quickly because that's your native tongue mm -hmm. that a lot of us did not catch it. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point that out, that that's sure. a very important uh, piece of, uh, of a factual information that you dropped last week and I appreciate that. Good seeing you. Uh, Brother Rock, any reflection from uh, you uh, over the last uh, conversation that we had? I think that it was important to recognize the prolification, the pro uh, prolification of caste throughout the world. And I think I had commented that even in white societies that they have imposed that same system on themselves. And um, today I was reading something where <clears throat> it was interesting to, to find out that in the 1700s, they, they took, uh, the Europeans took an interest in the law of Manu or the Manu Smyrtony. And so a part of their, uh, their whole co colonial quest was was very much based on using the same, what we call it under WD Farrar, we call trignology, you know, by, by taking that system and, and spreading it out through the world as they uh, dominated the earth. So <clears throat> I think that um, it was also interesting to, to see that on your flyer, you had Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and I saw something where when uh, Martin Luther King first visited in India, uh, he went to a school to speak and he was introduced as an untouchable. And at first he was taken aback by that title because he 
was familiar with what that meant. But in his address where he commented on this, he, 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 he explained how he had to think back to his experience in America and how the, the segregation and the, the mistreatment of black people in America very much qualified him as an untouchable. And so he had to admit that he is an untouchable because he can see the system of caste right here in America. And so I think that that was a very profound uh, re revelation for him and for us because we are America's untouchables. And we have also been victims of the caste system here in America, the social order based on skin color. So I think that's a very, uh, I think that's what's bringing us together is that commonality of realizing the reality of yeah. our condition, uh, both there in India and here in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think as a part of our second conversation, uh, drawing the parallels between the race and caste as a kind of a similar systemic discrimination, a system of operation that that ha that our communities has been suffering. So you know, I thought. That I will lay out a kind of uh, a kind of an understanding from the Ambedkarite perspective of the caste system briefly, and then we will we will discuss on it. So, according to Baba Sahib Ambedkar, the caste system is not a normal form of nation. What he termed it uh, it as a form of graded inequality. So, where the 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 the, the human being are 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 forced into the classes, and they are not just high and low castes. So there are gradation of the classes, like the highest, higher, high, low, lower, lowest. And within each of these categories of highs and lows, there are also the similar categories. So you can say that, you know, 4,000, 5,000 cast in India uh, and hierarchically arranged. So one of his greatest insight was that the caste system is a form of a graded inequality. And, and, and to give it a kind of a law to it, he said that, it's kind of uh, the ascending scale of reverence and descending scale of contempt as you go in this, uh, you know, statificate, statified uh, structure of the uh, that that the caste system entails. So that was his very very key insight into into the uh, understanding of the caste system as a graded inequality where the privileges are graded uh, between the people. The second insight of Dr. Baba's Ambedkar. Um, into the caste system was very unique, where he said that the caste system cannot exist in, in singular. It, it's always plural. And it's not, it's a, it's a system. Caste is a system, like a race is a system. It is not, uh, it is not that, you know, uh, some kind of an isolated event where the different nut bolts are tied to each other. And the third of uh, his uh, very profound insight was the caste system is, is formed on the basis of what is what he called the law of imitation where the people from the so-called lower caste try to imitate the so-called higher caste. And I think this insight was so profound that the lower you are in the, in the stratified hierarchy, the more you try to imitate the so-called people on the, on the top, as it were. So I think this, this, this third insight of his was very interesting in terms of understanding the caste system. And the fourth um, uh, uh, insight into the caste system that Dr had uh, given to us is that the caste is a notion of mind. It's a psychological thing. It has no biological reality. Like the race has no biological reality behind it. Isn't it that, you know, 99% of the DNA that we all share in common, we, we respective of where we are born, what we, you know, which country we are born, which race we are born into. So what race we are born into. So this fourth insight that the caste being the notion of mind and uh, a human construct, a social construct, was so important for Baba Sahib Ambedkar's uh, understanding of the caste system. So basically four points that Ambedkar has brought into play understanding the caste system. Number one, that the caste system is not a normal form of gradation. And it's, it's, it's like a graded inequality where there are the highest, higher, high, low, lower, lowest. And within each of these highs and lows, you find all these categories embedded into it. And the caste is uh, a system. It's not, uh, caste is not a plural thing. It's always, uh, uh, it's not singular thing. It's it's a plural thing. You know, there are castes. There is no single caste. There are castes and a series of castes. And uh, the third, his third of his insight was the law of social imitation, where the lower caste try to imitate 
the higher castes and the fourth was that the caste system is the notion of mind so i think this this is a framework in which he has tried to understand uh, the caste system in india and i think this 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 framework these four pointers to understanding the stratified discrimination i think can also be applied to wherever this kind of forms of discrimination exist so you know i will i will just you know push that into discussion so that we 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 try to bring out the similarities between the racial problem and the caste problem but before i i i i invite you to uh, throw some light on it the problem that we have been dealing uh, here is uh, the race and the caste are the broader categories but within that there is a category within the race of slavery where where our people in america where where were treated like the slaves they were brought in the chains shipped into the america and exploited similarly the the kind of uh, the the corollary of the problem that we are dealing in india is the problem of untouchability so we are on one hand we are talking about slavery on another hand we are talking about untouchability and as uh, brother rock has said that when uh, martin luther king came to india he was addressed as untouchable and he was really shaken when he went back to america and he has indeed declared that the blacks in america are the untouchables of america and uh, here in india when we study the problem of untouchability we find that the untouchables were indeed treated like the slaves like the bonded laborers they were tied to the land paid a piece of land they were exploited their wages were not paid and you know the whole economy of india was built on their labor just like the economy of america was built on the labor of the of the of, the, of our black brothers and sisters so i think you know uh, when we talk about this race and caste they are very broad categories and we have to segregate them into the category of uh the and the problem of untouchability so i you know with this reflection i will i will i will leave it to you to uh, please comment i will invite you to comment on this brother rock <laughs> well when you talk about untouchability one one of the things that uh martin luther king was was referring to uh, like when we talk about the segregation you know all of the systems that we were that were imposed on us are a reflection of untouchability you know the segregation not being the you know whites being they have to drink out of a certain uh um water fountain we had to drink out of a certain water fountain we couldn't go to the same schools you know we we couldn't uh we couldn't integrate, uh, mar you know, maritally. We couldn't, we couldn't mix races. You know, that was like one of the highest crimes. A lot of our brothers and sisters, uh, brothers and sisters, were were uh, victimized for. You know, killed. Like Emmett Till, he he was <clears throat> he was just uh, accused of looking at a white woman, and he was you know, beaten to death and killed. And so this is this is another parallel that. I know uh, untouchables or Dalits also share that that uh, the whole you know uh, a Brahmin could mate with uh, a Shudra or a Dalit, but a, a, a Dalit couldn't do the same. You know that's the same thing that we suffered from during the, in America during slavery and probably in some cases up to now. You know that type of discrimination still exists. So. The parallels run rampant when you look mm -hmm. at the problem. <clears throat> Mangesh, you 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 mentioned four areas that Dr. Ambedkar uh, talked about related to Varna or or the caste system. The first one that you mentioned was that it's not uh, normal that the system of Varna or caste is not normal. It's not a, a um, natural system. Over here, we understand that as being like an artificial or made system. Yaku, we call it Yakub's made man. And the system that they made was an artificial, unnatural system based on skin color, where you have on top the uh, paler on top and the pe persons with the richer uh, skin tones on bottom. So there is a parallel between what uh, Dr. Ambedkar taught in that first thing that you mentioned, the, the first uh, part of those four and what we were taught over here. Um, the second that you taught is that, that, that uh, Dr. Ambedkar spoke of is that caste or Varna 
is a, a systemic uh, problem. It's not just an isolated problem that you can just point to. It's just skin color. It's become systemic. It runs through um, every facet of, of a person's life. It runs through the uh, society. It's found in the cracks and the crevices that, that seem to be far away from just mere skin color. So it's a systemic problem. And we understand that uh, here also. So there, there's a parallel between race and caste, as, you, as you've outlined it there in what Dr. Ambedkar uh, teaches. You also talked on the third point, you said, said that uh, Varna or caste follows what you called the law of imitation. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, over here, we have a saying, be yourself, because we're, that, that, that's what we were taught by uh, W.D. Farad. Don't try to imitate the persons who are oppressing us. Be yourself. Do not imitate. So there's a parallel there. It's the same problem. It has the same cure. Um, uh, lastly, on the four points you talked about, it's a, um, a state of thinking mental state you had mentioned. And um, uh, that of course is uh, uh, so true. When, uh, when the Aryans moved into India, they had to capture some uh, territory. They had to capture territory. When the British and others moved into the, into the US, invaded this country, they had to capture uh, some land, some, some uh, territory. One of the most important or the most important pieces of, of a territory that they captured is our thinking. So it's not just the physical land that they had to, had to uh, conquer. They conquered the territory of our thinking. So it is indeed mental. And that's the first part. That's the first piece of territory that hopefully we can throw them out. We can uh, expel that system of thinking from this piece of territory. We don't control much, or it's more difficult to control much. This is entirely in our hands. So I just wanted to point out those parallels between those four areas that you just mentioned of Dr. Mbedker and what we're taught over here. And there's a perfect correlation between them. Well, that's very, very interesting because uh, as uh, Dr. Ambedkar, uh, Baba Ambedkar wrote to uh, W.B. Du Bois, uh, telling him how important it is for him to learn uh, the, the, the history of our, uh, our struggle in America. And, uh, and, and you know, there are, there are a lot of his writings and speeches are sprinkled with a lot of uh, insights into the uh, uh, black movement in America. And... Uh, and he was somebody who was trying to find the parallels between the uh, the problem of untouchability and the problem of slavery. Because now, you know, we, we are going to engage on a critical discussion over over uh, the, the the relationship between the race and caste. Because in the in the in the in the past, in the history, what has happened is the Indian Brahminical elites coming from a particular background where they, they believed in the supremacy of the Aryans, they had created a kind of an image where they tried to link up the category of race with colony imperialism. Now that is true to some extent, but that has obscured the problem of the, the people who are fighting racial discrimination and the caste discrimination to come together. Because, because in the history, what has happened is the Indian uh, Brahminical elites were in the forefront to uh, impose a lot of ideas about uh, the imperialism, the colonialism on the minds of our people there and completely obscuring the category of and the similarity between the race and caste. And I think this is so important that the race or the problem of race was you know not seen in the light of the problem of the caste as in the recent article isabel uh, um um wilker uh, i call, forgot her surname but you know she has argued and listen you know isabel wilkerson her, her article was published in new york times and guardian and she is writing a book on caste calling it 
enduring caste system of america you know and uh, you know, her, her her book is not at out but her, her but her ideas are out where she tries to argue that the the caste is rigid and it you know it is like a like a base on which the racial discrimination is constructed so one of the ideas you know that has you know has not uh, you know uh, that has been historically you know if we analyze the the, the movements uh, in in united states some of our people there were were looking at the problem of race from the caste per- perspective from the theories of caste and uh, when the the, the 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 christian missionaries when the american christian missionaries and the abolitionists some of them when they travel to india they 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 when they when they went back to america they 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 talk in terms of the caste and then uh, in the in the 30s there were there was a anthropological school of thought particularly led by an anthropologist anthropologist called uh, warner who who start who 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 talk who, who who you know start looking at the problem of race from the caste perspective but that was also period when the indian brahmanical upper caste uh, uh travelers to america where you know you know uh, uh, putting down the problem of untouchability putting down the problem of caste and highlighting the problem of the colonialism and we have seen that that they have been largely successful in really uh, you know uh, disconnecting the race and caste and connecting the race and colony isn't it now that historical wrong has been has been you know corrected Uh, by a lot of people including uh, the great martin luther king you know who has who was at the end of his life was coming you know there is you know it's very unfortunate that when he came to india nobody told him about dr ambedkar but he appreciated the what is called the reservation policy in india which policy and reservation policy affirmative action as you call it in america affirmative action policy we call it a reservation policy in india i know the reservation is a different in america it has what has happened is you know this this delinking of, of the the race and caste and and the thinking up of the race and colonialism imperialism the breaking up on y'all in two the breaking up on mine uh can you hear me now yes yeah sorry sometimes yeah, my internet platform. connection is uh, not stable Yeah. So you know, I like this. This, this, this you know, even when he was not heard of Baba Sahib Ambedkar, he was coming very close to his ideas. In fact, he was sold out to it, his ideas later. There are there is some there is one paper written by uh, Daniel Imerwa where he goes into this. So, having said this, the historical uh, you know uh, connect and disconnect between the caste and race category. How you to uh, look at and how our people uh, in 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 Black America look at the problem of. uh untouchability and the problem of caste discrimination in your you know in in, in, the, in the black american circles after yeah. after this uh, two centuries of you know interaction between uh, the, the 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 people in america and people in india particularly south asia mm. Well, did you pose a question? Cause I didn't catch it. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I'll, can you can you restate your question, Mangesh? Yeah, like you know, uh, there was an attempt from the uh, so-called Brahminical elites in India to uh, connect the category of race and colony. But the natural connection, you know, they, they, these categories are confused. But the race and caste, they are like similar categories as we have seen, isn't it? but there was you know some sort of disconnect of the racial struggle struggle and the the struggle the anti caste struggle and now it is again getting re established through the efforts of lot of gentlemen particularly even martin luther king was coming to terms and identifying himself as the untouchable and uh, and, and and people started uh, uh, 
uh, calling india uh, the untouchables the black untouchables of india so you know uh, do you see any 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 change in the consciousness of uh, black america in terms of uh, understand because of the problem of colonies over problem of caste oh, still yeah. remains so how you know how sort of understanding of caste and uh, uh, the problem of untouchability well what i've seen in the united states uh, there's been a growing trend for other uh, groups of people to try to identify with our struggle here in America and, you know, claim to, you know, our, with the, the pain of being marginalized, they've tried to kind of adopt that and homogenize it. Uh, like you have the, the, the gay movements, you know, the LBTQ movements and all of that. They try to, you know, kind of take on the role of being us, you know, being oppressed and marginalized and stuff like that. So, and and plus, I've seen some uh, attempts, even in the writings about caste, the caste system, to try to mm. disassociate color from caste. Mm. And and I I just was mm-hmm. reading about something like that today, where there were some scholars that uh, read the Manu Smyrny, and was saying, well, it wasn't really dealing with race. You know, it was more dealing with uh, the classification of, of work. You know, they were trying to disassociate uh, that, that, that reality that Varna, the word Varna means color. And <laughs> if you look it up, it, re- it identifies as race and color. So you can't really do that. But there are people that try to do that to try to desensitize the, the reality of the Hindu religion being based on that. And um, I saw, I just found a quote by uh, Dr. Becker and something that you had mentioned. He said that caste is a state of mind. It is a disease of mind. The teachings of the Hindu religion are the root cause of this disease. We practice casteism and we observe untouchability because we are enjoined to do so by the Hindu religion. A bitter thing cannot be made sweet. The taste of anything cannot, the taste of anything can be changed, but poison cannot be changed into nectar. And that quote made me think about something we were taught under the teacher of the W.D. Farad by the Rambu Elijah Muhammad when he talks about the reformation of a devil. Because we were taught that the devil was a grafted human being and that this grafted human being had a weaker brain than us and 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 that if you wanted to destroy the devil you had to hurl hurl uh truth at it and knock its brains out right Right. and so again to me that's another parallel because wd farad taught us cast in a in a different kind of way he Hmm. taught us and he left he left breadcrumbs for us to look to go back and look at it to see those those um, those similarities. And one of the things that he did <clears throat> when he introduced it to us in a book called The Supreme Wisdom, he talked about the creation of the devil and how he was made. And he did so by explaining to us that it was done based on the birth control law. And this birth control law was executed by a four-tiered administrative body. That four-tiered administrative body was the priest, uh, the, the, the priest or the minister, the, the doctor. doctors and nurses and nurses and the cremators, right? And so when you look at that setup, immediately it makes me think about how the caste system is set up. <clears throat> because of course you have the priest at the top, the doctor, the nurses, the cremator. These are all divisions of a working class. And even when you look at the cremators being at the bottom, that's the type of work that a lot of times Dalits were ascribed to, you know, the worst forms of work, you know, uh, cremating and uh, 
cleaning up bathrooms and janitors and you know the worst levels of work that yeah. that somebody could be assigned were assigned to the the lower caste and then you uh and so even in america when we look at our invisible see our system in america the, is invisible it's not so pronounced we don't call it a caste system but the system is set up the same you know mm -hmm. and like you were saying they're the degrading a degrading process of this heart hierarchy you know from something more prestigious like uh a priest hmm. a priest the politician the merchants you know the business owners and then you have the laborers and so that's pretty much the way that system is set up in america but then you when we look at what wd farad taught us he had the same system set up but it wasn't based on color because in the Nation of Islam, we have ministers, then we have the FOI, which is the military, and then we have the um, the the merchants, you know, people that were, you know, uh, opening up businesses. Then you have the, the labor. So uh, that was an, that was another way that we were introduced to this concept of this invisible caste system in America. So I just wanted to draw some parallels with all of this because it's all interrelated yeah. brother paul any reflections um yeah uh in addition to what uh, brother rock just uh, pointed out which i think is right on point uh many of those of those concepts that he talked about are going to be easily identifiable by people there where you are in india We've never pointed out here that you are in India and we are here in the in the United States. Um, some of the viewers here might think that you're in uh, Jersey City or something, but you're in you are on the other side of the world and we're over here. So um, many of the concepts that that were just articulated and shared by by rock you're going to identify with that immediately. You can understand those teachings immediately. Nice. That there's a four-tiered uh, sec um, uh, system that uh, Yakub used, according to our teacher, that later produced uh, different degrees of uh, skin tone, skin color, and there wow. were different laws placed on those different skin colors. Wow, there were laws placed on them. So wow. this that that's caste. Now, um, both the words uh, caste as well as you know, race, those are uh, some English words, relatively, relatively up-to-date modern words. Caste just means a purity, it's a, it's a Portuguese word. Yeah. Race really wasn't introduced, racism wasn't really, really introduced until about the 1950s. There's records of it having been used previous, but it's a, it's a new word that identifies basically uh, color, color um, ism, color ism. And varna means color. And it's that system of uh, separating people based on skin color. Where you are, Mangesh, I understand that um, people use some type of skin, skin lighteners, that they're very popular in that country. If someone's getting getting married, uh, sometimes they will even note what is the color of their spouse. Yeah, if yeah, it's yeah, if yeah. it's this shade or if it's that shade. Very true. Is that true? Okay. Yeah, very very so, true. And mm. so uh, skin color is very very pronounced in the uh, caste uh, system. It's recognized there, and it's very important. I remember seeing a number of uh, years ago, maybe two or three years ago, there was a uh, beauty queen that had won some type of uh, pageant there. And there was a debate as to if she was beautiful after she had won. And I remember someone saying she cannot be beautiful because she's too dark. Wow. Mm. Do you remember that? Does that ring any bells? But that's what was said. She can't be beautiful. And the and the proof of it was that her skin color. So uh, skin color, what 
uh, what's used over here, like the system that they articulated in is skin color. It was also based on work, what type of um, work that person did. So that slaves in this country did a certain type of work and they were banned from doing other types of, of work. And so um, vocation or work and skin color is very much tied to the same system. In India, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. So we can, we can use different words because the, those persons who went into India and set up the uh, Varna system, they chose languages and words that describe it there. And we have to make sure that those languages and, and, and words don't get in the way of us seeing what those languages and words yeah. are what symbolic of, mm -hmm. what they are actually symbolic of. Yeah. And what they are symbolic of is a system. As you pointed out, Dr. Ambedkar laid out a four period system, a four uh, pointed system. And it describes both systems perfectly. That's why we're we are perfectly, perfectly matched. The people there in India and the people here in this country. Our struggle is the same. It's the same struggle. And we need to wake up, realize that, unite and walk together and move forward in order to solve our problems. Very beautifully put up, uh, Brother Paul. You know, it's very amazing the way you have you have said it that the terms that we use and the language and the confusion over the linguistic categories and the concepts is one of the barriers and one of the aims of this discussion is to really get away with this conceptual sort of a thing and really look at the phenomena of slavery and untouchability. Uh, you two set me think uh, in a direction where we talked about the occupation. And when we looked at uh, the, the problem of untouchability and slavery, the way uh, in both the places, the people were, were asked to do derogatory work. Uh, they were tied up with, uh, with, the, with the bondage and you know, in the, with the lands. And uh, uh, the, the, the so-called superior vocations were not open to them. I think this is one of the very remarkable phenomena that is shared between our communities that you know our people were deprived of the pride sources, proud sources of making their livelihood. And that is that that was the, the people were broken. You see what I'm saying? Like the, 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 the manuals that the whites used to break the people. And just like you break the horses. And uh, similarly, in India, there were also, you know, uh, like Manus, Manusruti is a sort of a prime example of it. But there were a lot of ways by which the people were broken. And you know the word Dalit comes from actually the broken people, right. mm -hmm. the people who are broken. So when we when we when we remove this jungle of concepts and language, and it really has been happening, you know, happening in India, that has been happening in America, in terms of our communities, we see that there are parallels as to how people were, as you said, not only their minds were deeply colonialized, but also their bodies were colonialized. Their, 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 their choices were colonialized. Yeah. They were served to interest of the people, not their own interests. And, yeah. and we know that uh, 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 the parallels can be drawn from the, 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 the Jim Crow laws of Jim Crow, you know, yeah. you, you know, the way they were imposed and how the segregation in America was taking place. And, you know, similarly in India, you know, our people were segregated. Uh, we actually segregated, you know, like you had the doors uh, like the segregated doors for the colored and for the for the you know whites only. We similarly had uh, this sort of uh, you know uh, courts where you know we could we could go to certain places. We couldn't go to certain places. We could go in in, in, in Tamil Nadu. There were hotels run by the Brahmins where the Brahmins only could go. Other people were not allowed to go in the in those hotels. So when we when we look at this 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 similar phenomena you know, uh, uh, taking the umbrage of uh, language out, we look at a similar phenomena and we look at, look at what is called the, you know, in, in India, the, the instrument to break uh, the, the communities. One of the instrument was ex excommunication. The people were excommunicated. And that often lead, led to the social death of the individual. Before your actual physical death, people were, you know, killed socially and, 
And I think I, I can see that similar things were happening in, in, in America in terms of the slavery. The people were killed socially. The people were excommunicated. Oh, yeah. The people were denied that, you know, social share in the, in the community. And uh, that was not done uh, just uh, through sort of invisible means, but through direct things that were, that were done. So I was just reflecting on what you, you, you set, for, uh, set me for thinking in terms of the occupation, the, 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 the uh, inferior, the, the, the scavenging occupation, the kind of the lowliest of the lowliest jobs, and also in terms of this kind of a segregation and, 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 and excommunication, social boycott, where you know you are 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 stopped from that human interaction, human touch. So you know, I think there is also this parallel between our communities. Yes. Yeah. They, they have been you know broken. So yes. I would say that the the blacks in America, if we take this analogy analogy ahead, they are also Dalits, broken people. They were broken down by that, by the by the supremacist uh, order there, white supremacist order there. Yes. Yeah. Dalit, Dalit means means to take something and to grind it or to crush it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Negro means dead. So, so mm. there's a parallel. The word Negro, we're taught, means dead, mentally dead, mental yeah. death. Wow. Okay, yeah. so uh, that is a parallel because it's a people who who are destroyed. The so-called American um, Negro was made that way. It's not a natural uh, condition. It's a condition that was brought on as, as a result of, of uh, training through fear, through uh, punishment. There were, there were laws set up where if you stepped outside of those laws, you were punished. And there still are such laws. It's just that the society has shifted. And now the laws are almost, as Brother Rock pointed out, invisible. It's a uh, consumer uh, slavery where uh, you can be excommunicated if you don't, if you just don't buy the right stuff, you are actually excommunicated. If you think thoughts that are outside of the mainstream approved thinking, you are excommunicated. You are not part of the culture. So that keeps our, our thinking on a certain level. You can't introduce new ideas they're very dangerous. New ideas are very dangerous. What yeah. you and I and Brother Rock and uh, San Sangha uh, Dina is, is saying is something that over here is very dangerous. It's very dangerous. People are going to have to figure out, is this okay to be talking <laughs> with our people in Asia? Is this okay right. for us to be uniting with someone other than those groups that they tell us we must unite with or we must stay away from you know this isn't something approved by the corporations it's not something advertised on cnn it's not taught in the schools what uh, yeah. we're doing now is just talking brother and sister to brother and sister without anybody's approval so that's a dangerous thing over here it has to be approved people have to decide <laughs> they want to be uh, punished for stepping outside of the bounds or not. <laughs> so, um, but there was something that you said that I wanted to um, reflect upon for a moment. I can't can't recall exactly what it is. May I read a quote by Dr. Embedkar? Please, please, and, please. Uh, and show the parallels between what Dr. Embedkar uh, said and what was taught to us by W. D. Farad. Dr. Ambedkar, I heard or I read that he uh, said something to the effect of, quote, I measure the progress of a uh, community by the degree of progress which women have achieved. Again, he says, this is Dr. Ambedkar. He, he, he's a Buddhist leader, a teacher of the Dalit people in India, the so-called untouchables. He said, I measure the progress of a community by the degree of progress which women have made or women have achieved in that uh, uh, society. W.D. Farad said, this is a quote from our teacher, W.D. Farad. He said, just as a river will rise no higher than its source, so a people wow. can rise no higher than its woman. Those are the exact same concepts. 
W.D. Farad said, just as a river will rise no higher than its source, so a people can rise no higher than its woman. And that's very, very important that um, as we move forward in this system and in this struggle to address those types of problems that we understand that there is a family, male, female, child, family. And that family right now is under attack globally, especially here in this country right now, the entire family unit, which includes men, women, children families. Um, so it's very important that we recognize the importance of you know, women in the, uh, in the struggle. I can't remember what I was going to say, but I said no, something. No problem, no problem. Okay. Brother Rock, any, any reflections? Well, I know that um, a lot of uh, Mahatma Fule hmm. work that he did was with women because a lot of the the women that were raped hmm. by the Brahmins were uh, they you know they became outcasts you know hmm. nobody wanted them you know they were homeless and so a lot of his work which I believe Mahatma Phule was uh, an inspiration hmm. to Dr. Becker and he con considered himself a disciple of Mahatma Phule. And so, uh, you know, what Paul just said is, you know, the bedrock of, of the nation, you know, the nation of Islam's teaching that a nation could rise no higher than its woman. So, um, you know, I could see those parallels. And, and see, one thing that people don't realize is that Dr. Becker and W.D. Farrar were contemporaries of each other. Right, right. The work that uh, Dr. Becker was involved in was being done here in America but with a unique, diff with a different kind of strategy. You know, Dr. Becker, you know, uh, got his PhDs and, you know, he wound up getting into politics. With hmm. W.D. Farah's work, he, he started where we were at. Hmm. You know, he came to us and approached us in the name under the guise of religion because that's what we were. We were very religious people. Hmm. So hmm. the ideas he introduced to us were, were militant in a sense, because we needed that, you know, we needed to, to stand up. Mm -hmm. And so one of the, the, the things that occurred mm -hmm. as a result of his work was the civil rights movement. You know, a lot of those black power movements that you saw in America was a direct result of the work that he had been doing, you know, with the nation of Islam, with the black people, with making us more militant. And so it was a blessing to find out that that we had Dali Panthers, you know, that were inspired by the Black Panthers, you know, that, yeah, that yeah, took yeah. on the same ideology yeah. and the same militancy yeah. and the same strength of standing up against your enemy and, and getting in their face and talking to them, you know, with strength. And yeah. so, uh, you know, I just want to draw that parallel that the work is very much similar, you know, yeah. and there was definite they started to correlate with each other. They started actually reacting to each other in that way. But you guys didn't know that the man behind that progress, you know, that inspired the, the Dali Panthers was actually the work of mm -hmm. W.D. Farrar. Mm -hmm. Who is a Buddhist, who is a, who Buddhist, is a Buddhist teacher from, from India. India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would now like that, that's to hear important. about in our uh, latter conversations, the Buddhist connection, and uh, we would be, we would like to know more about him in the in the future interaction. But but a point picking up from what uh, uh, Brother Paul and Rock has just said about the the women issue you know, in India, the caste problem is basically linked with the exploitation of women, and uh, unless the women are free, the caste system cannot cannot be abolished. For example. Now, if we look at the caste system, it's a system of endogamy. And endogamy entails that the marriages should take place within the endogamous groups of the people. And the endogamous group is a caste. So what is important here is to uh, control the sexuality of the women. 
isn't it and that entails the exploitation of the women in the 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 in the, in the so called untouchable communities we 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 you know there are many reports as to how the women suffer the kind of three forms of uh, discrimination the caste class and gender by the virtue of being untouchable women by the virtue of being poor and by virtue of being a woman itself uh, so much suffering comes into the lot of women in india particularly the the women from the so called untouchable background and when we look at the the the, the problem of race i would like to uh, uh hear from you to uh, brothers that how the, uh, the 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 women you know particularly the african american women the black women have been you know exploited victimized to keep this you know system of uh, you know the perpetual slavery and the, the racial discrimination uh, are there parallels like that in america where 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 the black women were like exploited and treated like the dalit women here in india well, there still the, is fully broken there still is right now it's not right. just something from the past in order to uh, perpetuate a system there has to be people who are going to maintain it for instance the uh, caste system is mm -hmm. largely supported by the uh, shudra caste or wow. or the slave caste and caste beneath the the brahmins Brahmin caste cannot make the caste system <clears throat> work without the uh, complicity of the victims of that system. Mm. And so the victims of the system have to uh, perpetuate and maintain the system of oppression mm. in order for the system to work. Mm. And they do that through uh, promises of you'll have some type of a uh, divine blessing mm. if you serve us correctly later you will after be rewarded. You die. After right. you die, you will be right. rewarded after you die. Wow. In the hereafter. Same thing existed here. The same teaching existed here. Where uh, people were told, when you die, you will become white as snow. Wow. If you serve wow. correctly. Now that's something that's something black folks over here know. There's some, there's there's songs, church songs that talk about that. When you die. You'll get a pair of shoes. You'll mm. get a robe. You'll get a uh, you'll get a harp, and you'll get a crown. And you can wear your crown after you die. But you're not going to get it here. And you have to serve in order for that in order for you to get that there. The same here, die. same here, brother Paul. Same here. Okay. Okay. So exactly. This life, and if you serve well, you will be you will be born next life as a Brahmin, whatever. Yeah. Yes. If you act correctly. Mm. If you follow the rules hmm. and you suffer and you serve us correctly, they say, if you serve correctly, when you die, you will be washed white as snow. So you will come back as one of us. <laughs> You'll be able to live high on the hall, they say. Okay? So it's the same story. It's the same history. It's the same history, the same problem. Race and caste are the same problem. Um, uh, of course, there's some there's some very very detailed uh, differences. People try to make those differences real big, but we just have to look at the basic concepts and the basic ideas. Is that it's the same thing, except to the to the question that you were you were bringing up, Mangesh. Yes, those problems still exist. Black women in this country are still oppressed by a system that is perpet that is uh, perpetrated and maintained by fools who don't know any better. It's a, it's a, it's a fashion, it's a style. There is a, a culture that has uh, been imposed in this country where if you, well, there's a system that puts down women, black women, female women puts them down where they have to uh, um, they have to suffer due to a system that's very popular. It's in the music, it's in the culture, it's in the uh, arts. I don't want to say too much about it. I'm not too much into that uh, culture. I see it, but it's called street culture or uh, swag, swag culture, uh, pimp culture, 
hood it culture. That's a whole bunch of names. So break it down. Go ahead, Rock. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's it's a part of the hood culture, you know, to, to disrespect women. But unfortunately, it's been so uh, popularized, it's desensitized, because now it's cool. You know, it's cool to use certain slang words with women, you know, calling them different names like bitch and stuff like that. You know, they call themselves that now. So it's kind of like, you you know, you train some, you kill somebody for so long, it's cool to kill they self, you know? Mm. So now it's a, it's a part of the culture, you know, and the I, hatred. And see, I can see that too, because I mean, I've been, I've watched it, uh, like I watched the, the biography, it was a movie about Dr. and Baker mm. and, um, how you guys also have that same type of uh, antagonism amongst yourselves yeah. where you oppress each other, you yeah. know, and now you're using the, the system against yourself. And that's what mm -hmm. keeps the caste system alive is that it is designed to become uh, intrinsically destructive where it, mm -hmm. it feeds itself. So mm -hmm. you make people hate themselves mm -hmm. for so long you know, you hate people for so long, you you oppress them so long, they mm. adopt that as that's the way it should be amongst each other. So mm. out here, we call it crabs in a barrel, you know, where you have the crabs in a barrel mentality or the self-hate mentality. And that's yeah. what keeps the system alive, you know? So you you impose caste on yourselves, you know? And it, and it's the same thing with us. We, we, we use the word nigga like it's like, it's a part of our vocabulary, but it wasn't imposed on us like that. We weren't calling ourselves niggas in Africa, hmm. you know. <laughs> we yeah, weren't yeah, calling yeah, our yeah. niggas before we were taught the word. We didn't know the word, you know. Yeah, we were yeah, taught yeah. we were the nigger, and that's what you are. That's all you always be. You're dead, you know. Like hmm. Paul was still pointing out, you're dead. Yeah. And so that self-victimization is something that we all suffer from, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think that was a wonderful uh, reflection from uh, you two uh, brothers, and uh, and uh, the idea that uh, you know people are 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 forced to hate themselves, and that's why when we look at the movement in America among, among our people, black people there, the the the, the the, the 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 black moment the black is beautiful they are sort of uh, wonderful messages for the community here like you know uh, the self hate that is being taught by the by the by the races by the racial structures or by the caste structure and where people are felt uh, inferior where people are felt that you know they are they are lesser humans mm. and uh, therefore when we look at the, the 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 parallels between the communities here and there in terms of particularly the movement uh, black is beautiful you know like and and you know the black power that you know yeah. uh, these are very powerful words here and as you may, uh, mentioned our uh, people here started really to look at uh, the black power movement you know in terms of uh, a kind of a movement you know uh, misrepresented by the media in terms of only militant movement but it was a social movement where you know the black panthers opened uh, the, the the kitchens for the people they were doctors and you know these facts have been obscured by media but we know that you know it's a, it's a, it was a social movement whose one of the dimensions was militancy and you know that was to really provoke the sleeping people so uh, coming down to i think perhaps uh, we have another 5 minutes uh, to go on and we got three more uh, conversations to go ahead uh, in the in the coming three weeks i i i, I see you know like uh, sangadina has been you know patiently listening conversation today and uh, and I would like to listen to Sangadina you know, as to what uh, you know, whatever that you would like to share today. Yeah. Sangadina. Yeah, thank you so much, Mangesh sir. It was a wonderful talk today. And uh, uh, today we discussed uh, broadly about what exactly race and caste, how, uh, you know, segregation of our people, we, our people got colonized and about all the problems. Uh, Paul sir gave a wonderful quotation. I measure the progress of community by the degree of progress women have achieved. This is a famous quote by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. And uh, uh, whatever women's, our women's or black women's have gone through is 
in the history or today it's today also we see so many things so um, i think uh, i think we are all must all women must come forward towards and they should improve whatever we are going through and as roxel told about the segregation of women about the color and it was so uh, i have never heard about it this is the first time i have heard and it was i couldn't think and imagine this thing actually and exactly caste as caste is the problem their color is the problem so <laughs> that was a, a wonderful session i i have i've never uh, gone through the race thing much i have seen the the dalit which is suppression so we must actually uh, think and uh, come forward it's our women's responsibility to come forward and you know overcome this problem i think <laughs> thank you sangadina that was very insightful yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, really you, you spoke from your heart about the condition of uh, our sisters here uh before we 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 conclude the dialogue today um, paul and brother of uh, would you like to say a, you know a few words uh, before we conclude this session well um, i'm it's, it's it's such a high honor to be uh on here with you all and it 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 really um lightens up my heart to to have this conversation because like me and Paul have said this is actually a dream a dream of WD for all that this happens all of his work that he did here in America was leading us to this moment wow yeah Uh, I think Paul told me um that um Dr. and Bedkor said that one day you would all would receive help from Buddhist yeah. from somewhere else. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here to yeah. help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here of service. And yeah. we're we're students of uh Dr. I mean of WD Farad and admirers of Dr. and Bedkor and Dr. Uh, Mahatma Phule and and all the other uh, great uh legendary leaders that you all have had you know unfortunately a lot of our leaders have been killed for the struggle you know Martin Luther King was killed because of the struggle Malcolm X who else you also had on your flyer he was killed because of his radical approach to trying to stand up to the injustices and the oppression and he was going into a political direction which is the same direction that Dr. Ambedkar took where he he actually got so far he wrote our constitution yeah he tried to uproot caste from the very core of your nation and that that that's a that's that was a miracle you know after getting so much opposition from Mahatma Gandhi to 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 do it you know And so uh you know we're just honored to to be having this conversation to be here yeah. to discuss these things that have never been discussed openly in the public with mm -hmm. people from the United States black people mm -hmm. Buddhist black Buddhist from the United States with our brothers and sisters in India. Mm -hmm. Right. Brother Paul Yeah, I'm happy to um again always happy to see you brother hmm. Mangesh and um, likewise like we, we've been talk we've been talking uh uh for some time look forward to our future conversations hmm. hopefully these conversations are um a part of a larger uh conversation that can happen between large groups of people it's not just limited to a program that's that's broadcast um uh it's our hope our dream that that this grows that the conversation opens up and grows and includes other uh points of view that's important that other points of view can uh add themselves onto onto it so we can build a a closer uh connection and understand the problem and the solutions and do something about it step forward and and yeah, move yeah. and do something about it 
but it begins with us talking. It begins with us recognizing, reaching across the you know waters across Water. the planet, and just seeing each other, recognizing each other, and saying, "Hey, uh, hmm. let's talk. Let's get to uh, know each other. Something about about your history. Hmm. Something about our history." And we find out that there is a uh, commonality to that. And we build based on that, on the commonality. Yep. Right, right. So right, I look yeah. forward to, to the future future talks and future things that we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that has been a wonderful uh, uh, second conversation that we had. And I, I hope that the people listening to us will uh, will. will will understand the intricacies and the parallels between the race and caste, the slavery and untouchability, the plights of people in both the side of the, uh, both the sides. And we are going to have uh, uh, three more conversations uh, where we, we will be covering a lot of ground about uh, the interaction between the Blacks and the Dalits and uh, Buddhist connections between the Blacks and the Dalits where you can talk about uh, WD uh, Fad and you know all those beautiful connections, uh, the Buddhist connections, and uh, in the end we are going to talk about how we can walk together, work together in solidarity for the problems that um, our communities are facing. So, um, thank you so much uh, for joining today, and uh, uh, see you next week. <laughs> okay, see you next week. Thank you, Sangadina.